Oh man, this is um, kind of surreal. Oh, <laughs> I see. Hey guys, Jimmy here, and welcome back to another video. And yes, I am wearing the Praga polo shirt. The logo is there somewhere. With probably the deepest V that mankind has, uh, has ever seen. Ooh. But the reason why I'm wearing this shirt is because today's video features my lovely Praga R1. If you guys don't know, I've been driving in uh, real life this season. It's been amazing. I've enjoyed every moment in the Brick Car Endurance Series, of course, with Praga. And the Praga R1, if you guys don't know what it is, is basically a little baby weeny weeny prototype but it's still a weapon 360 brake horsepower or so weighing in about 650 kilograms loads of aero slick tires pretty much everything you'd want from a race car and it's also by far the fastest car that i've ever driven given that before the prior all i've driven on the circuit were mx5s and bmw1 series so bit of a jump oh oh scratch the beard I like that noise, guys. So at the moment, the Praga is oh. powered by a four-cylinder Formula 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 Renault engine with big turbo strapped on side. But it wasn't always that way. The Praga R1 actually used to be naturally aspirated, which is a version that we have in a Seto Corsa. Now, luckily for us, some absolute hero created the Praga R1 T Evo, which is a version that's a lot closer. To the uh, the real life car as it stands at the moment in its current spec uh, and that car is pretty quick but it made me think how much power could you put into the praga before it starts becoming a little bit of a problem and then i remembered that i have this awesome tool that lets me put formula one engines and everything so i thought fuck it formula one engine praga yeah. Just before we get into being a sim racing mad scientist, I want to say a quick thank you to Fuel for Fans, who, as you guys may know by now, have been sponsoring me for pretty much this entire year. And a quick reminder, if you're interested in getting your hands on some F1 merch, you can use my code JIMMY21 at checkout to get 20% off every order. If you're interested, the link is in the description. Now, this is why I just love modding, because here is my Praga R1, the car that I race in real life, in front of me now, complete with the livery, which for me is insane. When I started doing sim racing, I always picked the livery of the guys that I used to like watching in real life. So to see a livery of one of my cars in uh, in game, it's, uh, it's pretty damn cool. Big grin on my face. But yeah, this is the Praga R1T Evo mod. Uh, and one big difference between this car and the real life version is that this car does not have the shark fin that we have here um, in real life. And I figured that what I would do to give you guys some context of just smashing engine into my real life race car is take this car in its current spec to Donington, the next circuit on the brick car calendar, and see what sort of time we can set and then compare that directly to 1000 horsepower hybrid goodness. I am just a wee bit worried though about those, those rear tires. They aren't the widest in the world. They can just about cope with 350 horsepower or so. Not sure about a thousand. Mm. So here we are then at Donington. I'm in the pit lane in Goldie, which is great because I can just see the little gold, flash of the gold there on the, the wheel art, which is just like you do in real life. Although in real life you sit in the centre, I'm offset to the left here. And this is a bit surreal because I was actually here semi-recently for the supercar driver Michelin Secret Meet. And I got to drive against loads of cool race cars. There's a video on that by the way, if you haven't seen it, again another link for that down below in the description. And my time for that was a 1.32 or so uh, for the full circuit here at Donington Park. Now I'm on the normal R1 Evo setup, so about 350 horsepower. Uh, no F1 engine just yet, and I'm going to see what sort of time I can do. Have that as our baseline before we chuck in the silly engine. Make our way out the pits then. And I've actually turned the four seat back down a little bit, uh, which is less than it would be in the Praga in real life. The Praga in real life is really heavy to drive, super heavy to drive in fact. Uh, when I'm doing my, uh, I guess, training uh, on the other rig, I train on 100% four seat back pretty much on the, on AMS. So you really do have to. Uh, send it round here on your arms, but let's uh, get the car warmed up and we'll come back when we start our flying lap See what sort of time we can do. So coming up to the last corner then For my outlap, I've noticed this car is a lot more uh, 
sketchy on the brakes than it is in real life, so we've got to be very careful of that going into the first corner. But here we go, flying lap time. Let's see what sort of lap time we can do uh, on the uh, the base level of this car as we come down the walls T1. Third gear through here. Just peel off very, very slowly on the brake. Don't want to go too far off to the kerb. Ah, don't worry about it. Just won't tell the engineers, it's fine. Now down the Carina curves. Small blend off the throttle here as I would in real life. Wouldn't take sixth gear usually. Down the fourth, locking up on the way in sideways on the way through. Oh my god! Okay. That wouldn't happen in the real life, girl. <laughs> we go again. They come up to the last corner then. Definitely for the first time. There have been no previous attempts. <laughs> oh my god! Why don't my brakes work? Well, this doesn't bode well. A bit more speed through here. It feels a bit braver. No! Jesus! <laughs> right now! For the first. The, for the first time, zero incidents, <laughs> zero problems. Oh, oh, it's a, it's a faster one. Oh my god! <laughs> even, even in this stock form, it is uh, lethal in this version of the mod. Breaking so early, just, just fearful, really. Second gear through here. Second gear in real life. First gear's a bit too short. There's a really nasty bump on the entry here in real life, it isn't quite in this version of the track, which is nice, because that sucks. Into the last corner. Right, so our time to beat, which I'm sure we will, we bolt an F1 engine in this, is a 130.3. So despite being super sketchy, I was nearly two seconds faster than I was in real life, which makes me think the mod is a little bit quick. Um, but it still gives us a benchmark and a time to beat. That's the important thing. I tell you what, if I go to get into the car, at the end of October, when we go to Donington, it sounds like this. <laughs> it's so mean! Cause I, obviously, I know this car sort of sounds when it's just ticking over in real life, and this is next level spooky. Now, if I go to the setup menu and go to gears, you can see we have a max speed, apparently by gear, of 563 kilometers an hour. I don't know how fast that is in miles per hour. I'm going to take a guess at about 350 mile an hour. That's what that actually. I was bang on! 349.8! That wasn't on purpose. Oh, I'm just a king. I'm just a king. But anyway, it's far too fast. We, we're not going to hit that. So I'm going to take the final drive as low as it'll possibly go, which is apparently 434, and then take the gears down uh, to a speed where it might actually hit it and not just have... Su the first gear is 100 mile an hour, for crying out loud. We've got to change all this. I forgot to turn the four C back down. I don't need my thumbs anyway. Well, that's better. Now I've got a chance of actually coming out of this video with my wrists intact, but... This is kind of surreal, because I've... This feels oddly familiar, but very, very foreign at the same time. So out onto circuit. Now, the first question I have for myself, I'm going to do it once I get out of uh, T1 here, Redgate, is will the tyres hold the power? Put it in third gear. Put it down. No. Oh my god, even though I like half throttle. Oh my Jesus. Goldie, what have they done to you? <laughs> okay, easy movements. I said easy movements, then easy. The thing is, while we're obviously speeding up, the downforce is building, but it's just, the tyres just can't take it. Oh my god. Oh Jesus. Oh, well held, Jimmy. Thank you, Jimmy. Right, let's try opening her up down the straight. Nope. See you later. I'm out. <laughs> All of a sudden, that 1 minute 30 is looking uh, pretty difficult to beat at this point. So obviously, this entire car is set up to take the power that it makes in real life. This is making pretty much triple the horsepower that it usually would, so I'm not surprised that it's struggling to go in a straight line at all. The front tyres on this are tiny, they're only I think 205 fronts on the, on the slicks at the front, of course they're not powered, uh, powered wheels, but still, this means that any sort of speed, you just can't, there's no, there's no turning, there's not enough there. It's funny that I can actually not even corner as fast as I would normally. Because the car's all out of balance. I hope you've always completely worn the rear tyres to the rim. Well, the tyres that we run in Brick Car are an endurance compound. They'll do two one-hour races and be okay. 
Although I've got a feeling we're going through them a bit quick at the moment. I'm half throttle. I'm literally half throttle. That's full throttle. Oh my god. I was full throttle then for like a nanosecond. You heard the noise has increased. Alright, let's just try and... I was going to try and gun it out of the corner and just keep it straight, but... Just the the smallest... Bit of throttle in the wrong place, you just loop. Okay, right. That's the strap. Short shift like a motherfucker, and we might get round. Okay, here we go. Easy. Easy, Jimmy. Oh my god. Even like at half rock when six gear the wheels are spinning. And these are slicks. I'm just, I'm just blowing them off basically straight away. There's no chance there's any grip. Oh my god. This is like driving in the wet at Snetterton. Come on. It's easy now up the hill. Come on, downforce. Do something. Number 130 to beat. There's no way I'm attacking this as much as I was trying with the uh, sort of normal power, but on the straights I'm just taking so much more speed once I can actually get it straight. Okay, easy. Make it, make it, make it. Oh, God damn it. I'm going to count it anyway. This is so difficult. Well, I'm having to concentrate so much just to keep this car in a straight line. Corner in speed. Mm, forget it. Slow it down, slow it down. Ah, lock, don't go off. Okay, good. Time should be quicker. 130 to beat. Only just a 29.8. Come on, surely I can go faster than that. A second faster with an F1 engine is not worth the price <laughs> of investment, I don't think. Oh my gee. Oh my god. <laughs> Tell you what, uh, guys back at the factory, F1 engine idea, can it, can it lads. It's not working out. <laughs> it's not working out. Like, for some sort of context, like in the real car, you can pretty much just map the throttle out of most corners. Obviously in the solar corners, there's a bit of throttle control there to avoid wheel spin, but here, down the straight, halfway down the straight, I'm still having to modulate the throttle. Like here, I'm not full, I'm not full. This is full throttle now. You see why I don't do that too often? I'm gonna take one more go at it, because I just don't feel like what I think is less than a second faster than the normal car is very good for having all that extra power behind us, so. Give it one more go. Breaking super early. Try not to get on the throttle early out the corners, because the thing is, my part throttle with the F1 engine, oh my god, is almost full throttle. Probably more than full throttle with the normal engine. As you can see, I'm in complete control of the car all the way down the Craner curves, which is fine. I'm not about to have a massive accident. Not this guy. No, no, no. Up the hill, come on. Oh, Jesus! That is a whole another level of, of curse well, Listen guys, I don't think I'm going to go any faster than that 129.8 right now, to be honest, because the amount of effort it takes to get this car around a single lap is actually more mental effort than driving the real car is, because there's just no grip anywhere. You're struggling for traction out of every corner. The brakes just can't cope with the speed you're carrying into the corner. And the little itty bitty front tyres that are made for the car in real life and how much it weighs, of course, and the power in real life just cannot deal with that extra level of entry speed. So whilst putting the F1 engine in our car did gain us about eight tenths of a second, it's also shortened my life considerably. So I don't know, decent trade-off, I guess. But yeah, guys, that's what happens when you try and put a modern Formula 1 engine into my real life race car, the Praga R1. It doesn't go very well at all. Honestly, I think the GT86, the road car that we did the engine swap with, did.
did better than this did. But maybe we should race them together. That could be a fun idea. Maybe I'll do that for a video. Who knows? But I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this. It's always fun to do stupid stuff. I, this is the thing I love most about sim racing. It's me passionate about making videos because I'll never get to find this out in real life. But here I get a little bit of an idea of what that would be like. And I hope you guys enjoyed it too. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe, do all the good things as well. Thank you so much for the support on the recent videos. It's been a notable difference it feels like in the last few videos so thank you all so much for that and a big thank you as always to my patrons and sponsors for supporting my channel and let me do what i love take care have an awesome day and i'll see you all next time oh, no. oh my god 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 <laughs>